when you are a dentist, implantologist, maxillofacial surgeon, or you are working with implants, and when you have problems with bone grafting, soft tissue augmentation, or you need a predictable, safe, and fast reconstruction concept for your implantology daily work, then you are here right on the place. And I share, I am sharing my knowledge, my um, experience with this phenomenal, unique concept of bone augmentation with pure bone, autogenous bone from intraoral site for reconstruction. Before I start uh, today, I will video to show you the step uh, step by step protocol of bone harvesting and lateral augmentation. This is the first procedure uh, which for me was the start in the grafting procedures. If you are stay here in this live um, this, uh, podcast and you are call a colleague which is new, then the first what you can uh, do is the bone harvesting technique and then lateral augmentation. This is the start, the point zero. And then you can continue with your procedure to a high or vertical, high vertical augmentation. And this is our next topic today, the lateral augmentation with the Curie concept. And, and I will now start with the case here. And uh, we are speaking with the class four. If we have a local defect after tooth extraction, look here, all the buccal, buccal bone is resolved. And you can of course start here with uh, biomaterials and um, another things, uh, allogeneic xenograft. But here I will show our predictable and safe and fast concept with um, the Kui concept. So we uh, look the defect in the consultation uh, session, and then we plan. We, we plan here to uh, make a bone harvesting from the same area. It's uh, like a whistle tomb extension, the flap design. We have a sulcular flap design with uh, uh, with full flap to open the linear oblique externa. This is the anatomical area which is our fair choice to harvest bone. And it's not the ramus area. This is a little bit different. Ramus, ramus area is more distally, more dangerous area. And I will say clearly this, that we are staying here only on the linear, linear oblique externa. This is the anatomy of the um, buccal, buccal part of the mandible. Okay, this is our first step to cut with the micro saw. It's a special disc, the two vertical incision. Two vertical incision is uh, created by a mini micro disc like here and uh, then after the two vertical incision we are here on the uh, rural tombs area this means seven eight more eight. then uh, after two uh, vertical incision we change the disc to our angle the contra angle handpiece with uh, the protection, soft tissue protection, uh, protection, and do uh, include inclusive uh, water cooling. The next step is the, the connection between two vertical incision. This is a, one of the most pr uh, safest protocol to bone harvesting here, and the uh, control of. Uh, about the mirror show us the two lines. One is the vertical line and one comes from means as as horizontal incision. No. Uh, linear oblique external, yes. And here the 
main um, problem what some colleagues uh, after our live events or calls in uh, have uh, had in the office is that the overcrossing was not enough like here look here the um, problem the problem here is uh, our to less to less overcrossing of two incisions and this can produce little big uh, struggle during the operation when you're not uh, able to our uh, cross the lines the block will come out more difficult and more slowly and for the patient can be the procedure a little bit more uh, uncomfortable and for us it's important that the two lines is over crossing very very important then i check it here and then the next step is from our safe bone harvesting protocol or from the retromolar area is the perforation of the crystal area nearly mm, three millimeters away from the border of the linear with external to lingual this is very very important because we want to in a bone block which is enough thick because we will create two two blocks and you can see here how thick can be the cortical area of the linear oblique externa minimum three or four millimeter thick bone now the next step is uh, uh, using this bone scraper to um, to smooth the sharp edge in the area not only to smooth we want also when particulate bone for the augmentation so the next technique uh, from the uh, protocol is the uh, split bone block technique it's a very very important part if you forgot this part you go directly absolutely directly out of from of our concept this is the modification of the standard solid bone block augmentation well, all around the world is using the solid block with all of the negative um, uh, disadvantages so this block this block uh, is one of the two pieces is for our concept uh, not enough thin because we need a bone thickness for minimum uh, minimum one millimeter and that's this is very important what I said now minimum one millimeter if your bone block thicker than one millimeter the resorption potential of the bone is higher and when we have a high resorption potential of the bone block uh, the remodeling process will be high and the risk of bone resorption over the time in the years after the bone augmentation is too high and after some years can uh, can uh, we can get a result what is not successful and uh, to avoid this condition we have to create thin blocks from one to thin blocks it's minimum one millimeters maximum 1.5 this is the range um, to be to, to try to be arrived to reach with your bone the we, we spoke about uh, we spoken about the thickness now not only to reduce the bone thickness is important we really want to win also particulate bone because this is our goal this is vital this is red this is life this is real life bone and when we catch the bone during this procedure this is for us gold it's the same price or more uh, as uh, bone a bone more uh, more 
value than um, gold. So the next step is the implant preparation. I prefer an implant which have an aggressive uh, micro design one and uh, internal uh, connect, uh, connective tissue, uh, connective uh, uh, abutment area. So, and this implant is uh, from Turkey. This is a nucleus implant system with 4.1 size. And you can see the rough surface under the crest, until the top. Okay, the protocol is in uh, like uh, other implant systems this is not new for you and the rest uh, we are going to insert from the implant with the uh, with manual you can see the big uh, buca, buccal defect uh, of course you can use here some another materials or another concepts but in this video you can see our special autogenous bone augmentation protocol. You can see it's four, five, six millimeters buccal, buccal defect here. And when you want to have a long-term result, then we have to use natural um, products, vital products. And the first block I fix, I'm going to fix in this video with uh, micro screws. This is a special 1.0 screw which allows me to create small um, holes which is uh, in also uh, effective in small defects uh, but also in big um, size defects you can see we can bring insert with a special screw holder which can catch the head of the screw and uh, you will see in the next uh, seconds if the bone the bone and the implant mm, have not contact the space between implant and um, bone is very very important and um, we will left always uh, leave always a space to fill this area with particular bone because the cortical bone is a solid block of course in this block are uh, white cells like osteoblasts like osteoblasts but when the bone is cortical, the nutrition uh, to the cells inside in the block is uh, or, or the time to to get uh, new nutritional new vessels uh, is too long when the block is, is and our goal is to bring the size of the bone block of a minimum what we uh, needed to create a contour a container a box and the gaps which is between the new contour which is inside the contour and the defect we are going to filling with particular bone chips and the particle bone chips have has a size from one to three millimeters, which in studies is the best size for good re revascularization with a less resorption uh, behavior. Uh, we have also studies which size is the best um, uh, size for predictable augmentation. To small size under one millimeter, the resorption is higher. And when you work with safe scraper, you will get the optimum size. And the size uh, is 
also this kind of size you can put in the gaps to fill the gaps between the box and the defect which is also important this is the next step is to bring very high pressure on the chips that you have a not free sprays you can see the before the augmentation after the augmentation and when you look very very uh, directly of this area you can see and remember that the anatomic roof is like a natural um, native bone we have a small layer of cortical bone and a big part of spongious bone and I will I want to say something uh, another we have studies which is co compare the bone block solid bone block technique with the biological bone augmentation technique and the results are phenomenal if you use a solid bone block and after three or four months you win bone with trepan fresh and you send the biopsy to the pathology to get the histologic uh, results and the results are phenomenal the solid blocks uh, the solid book have as results the 50 percent less vital cells compare in compare with the biological bone augmentation can concept 50 percent less life 50 percent less vital cells 50 percent less um, immune uh, arms of uh, some uh, soft tissue infiltration or infection risk and this is to less from my concept and the resorption rate is high and uh, this is a good result of the study first of all the retromolar bone harvesting concept is a safe technique when you stay in the protocol the protocol is first of all two vertical position the second uh, step is to make a horizontal incision in the apical part to bring the connection between two vertical incisions. Then the uh, third uh, part or step is to create crystal perforation to get the block easier and faster. And the normal time is 9 to 12 minute, uh, minutes to get the bone from the retromolar. Okay, now the bone uh, block is in our hands. The next step was the splitting in two pieces. This is in two second step. And the third step is because the bone was too thick, we we was uh, thinning with uh, the safe scraper. And when we arrive or reach the correct thickness from one, one millimeter minimum we can uh, fix with special micro screws they have the diameter of 1.0 millimeter and then the uh, end of the operation for the heart tissue augmentation is to fill the gap with particular bone chips which uh, we are was winning from the retromolar area during the uh, uh, shoot the eggs and during the thinning the bone is to close the bone and here very very uh, careful because we need a passive one so when you are uh, in the implant work when you are working with uh, grafting procedure uh, the tension on the flap is where they're very critical if you forgot or you are not or if you forgot to cut the perioscum enough uh, the risk is higher to become a one distance and all of your work was for nothing the patient is angry your team is angry you have a bad day you have to reconstruct again or the patient go away and uh, they will not pay your work so 
close with a double uh, technique, double suture technique. One layer of the horizontal matrats technique, suture technique. The another one is a single um, suturing technique. And then we have a passive one closure. We are using monofield suture in 5.0, and this is the one closer. Uh, the area from the bone harvest, then the crystal area, and the slow incision, uh, vertical incision on the nasal part. Thank you for your time. Uh, adios, amigos, um, besos, y saludos a la Latinoamericano. Vielen Dank für eure Zeit. Ich freue mich auf einen schönen Rest der Zeit. Genießt die Zeit. Sammeln Sie sich in Teschekür, die Jürgen. Herrschen, wer. Hayatınız ve meslek hayatınız başarılı olsun. Zamanınız için teşekkür ediyorum. Thank you very much. Goodbye for my friends and colleagues from all of the world. Bye bye.